Giant Pipe Jeff here from Two Hacks Garage. Well, you're probably wondering what I'm doing here. Well, there's been a lot of talk on cleaning engines, cleaning parts, and doing it on the cheap. One of the methods that was discussed in the live the other night was electrolysis. Now, electrolysis is actually quite simple, it's quite effective, and it's also quite cheap. It basically involves the process of mixing a solution that is basically like sodium bicarbonate, which you can buy at any store, two or three bucks, an old battery charger, and a sacrificial piece of steel, but not stainless, that'll release poison into the solution. So, what is electrolysis? Well, it's basically running electricity through that water solution, and that solution acts as, you know, an inductive piece, or an, induct, an induction piece that goes through and it flows electricity through. Water is good, but you know what? It's a lot more conductive when you have that solution in there. And that solution also is critical in helping break up that rust. So basically what you do is after you tear an engine down, and this is just kind of one of our you know, test small block Chevys that we have laying around, you degrease it, you get all the gunk off of it, you get all the gack out of it, and just make sure it's you know, completely free of grease, oils, and contaminants. And from there, what you're going to be able to do is you take this engine block and you put it in a big tub. And you want to make sure the tub's big enough to, for it to go in there. And you just lower it down in there. And what you do is you mix up a solution of water and the sodium bicarbonate, a.k.a. Arm & Hammer Laundry Booster. So, kind of the first step of that is when you put that in there, you have a sacrificial piece of steel. You can see I've already used this once. It's an old flywheel. And you make sure these aren't touching. I'll show this a little bit more here in a second. You put your engine block down into the solution your sacrificial piece of steel that's not touching the block, you hook up your leads to those. So your negative lead will go to your engine block and your positive lead goes to your sacrificial piece of steel. So what's that do? Well, here's exactly what it does. As that energy flows through that solution, it actually starts getting in with that solution into that rust and starts breaking it free from the actual cast iron block. You don't want to do this on aluminum. So when that starts happening and breaking that free, bubbling, you know, and all that stuff, which you will see, it starts pulling it towards your sacrificial piece of steel. What will happen is, is all that junk rust connects to this. Now, this does take some time. I did this once before on this block for about four hours just to test it. I wasn't exactly happy with the results because there was still a little bit of more rust in there. And I decided I wanted to do it again. And one thing I did notice that I wanted to do was pull it out and turn it around because that's going to want to flow through there, that electricity, one way and not the other. So it does help to, you know, kind of do a little bit of research on this. And also what you want to do is make sure you have ventilation. This does produce hydrogen in the process, and we don't want your shops to go boom. That would not be good. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and get started on this. And I'll do a time lapse of showing you how this all works. But when I get it all set up, I'll explain what I'm doing. See in a few. All right, I'm back. And as you saw, I was filling that up with water a little bit at a time and putting the solution in. Yeah, I was using a bucket. Everyone's probably wondering when you use a hose. Well, it's still cold here in Illinois and haven't got all the hoses out and hooked them up yet. So I just use good, clean, hot water from inside. Um, so I was, as you saw, I put a little bit in there, mixed the solution, a little bit more, mixed the solution, put the engine block down in there. Um, Unfortunately, my tub isn't quite big enough. You see a little bit of sticking out. But as I said, this is more for demonstration because I've already done this. Um, so that solution in there, it will mix up pretty decent. And I'm just going to add a little bit more. I don't, you know, the ratio on this, just dump it in. You know, this isn't rocket science. So the next step is, is to hook this thing up. 
So as you can see, I got my sacrificial piece of steel here, and I just used an Irwin clamp, clamp it on there. You don't want your surface that's going to be cleaned to touch that. You, you need that gap in between it. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hook up the battery charger. Um, I use an old analog style one. Um, the digital ones seem not to really work with this. Um, so you, know, you can find these cheap a lot of times at garage sales for a couple bucks. You know what? Buy them up. So what you do is you take the negative lead to the side that you want to clean, which is the engine block. And I'm going the furthest away, trying to get stuff to pull all the way through here. Um, and I'm going to put the positive lead on my sacrificial piece of steel. So basically, what I'm trying to do is create electricity to flow from the furthest end of this engine block, with all those little passages, to this. Now, mind you, I did clean this really, really, really well. Um, kind of a tip on cleaning an engine block, oven cleaner is your friend. Just don't use it on aluminum. But I had sprayed this down, degreased it multiple times, and a lot of oven cleaner. So it's clean. I've already done this process once. But this is more for demonstration. So now that I have this set up, I'm trying to produce a electricity flow from the furthest end back. Have my, have my gap here. Nothing's touching. And let's see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on time lapse, kind of step away from it. Just as that safety tip, once again, make sure you have proper ventilation. This does create hydrogen. Also, when you connect these, make sure your battery charger is unplugged first. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. Let it rip, and we'll see what happens. See you in a little while. All right, well, I'm back. Um, this is still going. It's only actually been about an hour and a half. And what you've seen here is look at all this rust and this sludge. Um, that is being pulled through in that electrolysis process. Um, the one thing I do want to point out, when you watch this in time lapse, you can see everything flowing. That's actually the current being produced by this process. You can see how the clean bubbly water is kind of being pulled this way and all the contaminants from this block are being pulled to that sacrificial plate. It's kind of acting as almost like a magnet because it is the positive charge on this. All of that gets contained to here. And what ends up happening is, is when you pull that off, you'll see all that rust and that junk attached to it. Um, one good idea that you can actually do is reverse this. Since I am pulling for the furthest point of this block, you can actually take this, put the plate over here, and switch your leads and pull the opposite way. Um, one kind of thing you, you might have seen was I was adding a little bit more solution here and there. When you have one of these old chargers, you watch the amperage gauge. You want it to be pegged as high as you can on this process. And I noticed it that it was high and then it dropped. What that was telling me was it didn't have enough current going through it. So I added a little bit more solution, mixed it up, and the needle went and pegged. Little tip on this, the higher the amperage, the better it's actually going to work. So as you can see here, <laughs> this actually does work. It's a little bit of backyard science. It's cheap. And you know what? It's kind of fun. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this thing go, keep on going. And uh, here in a little bit, what we'll do is we'll pull it out and we'll see what happens. I will catch you guys here in a little while.
All right, well, I'm back. And uh, what I did was I let it go for a little bit longer. Probably only did this for about two and a half hours this time. But as you can see, it really, really, really started working that rust out of here. Um, just for some reference, the next step would be on this. Take it outside, pressure wash it, take some compressed air, blow everything out, oil it up until you're ready to do something with it. Um, but, you know, it really works well getting into all the little water jackets in here, getting inside of it, and pulling that rust out. Um, as you can see, kind of like here in the front, it actually looks pretty clean. Um, yeah, it is kind of a backyard science DIY method. Um, but you know what, it actually works pretty well. In these little crevices in here, your water jackets, everything, not too bad. Valley area, pretty good, China rail, cleans all that up. So basically just with a little bit of effort, a little bit of time, a cheap battery charger you can pick up at a garage sale, $3 worth of the Arm & Hammer uh, sodium bicarbonate solution. You know what? You can do this yourself. Um, I should have done a video on how I clean this and kind of like a DIY hot tank. Maybe I can do that, you know, when it gets a little bit nicer outside. But just to show you how much junk and rust it pulled out of this in this process, my sacrificial plate looks like this. Look at all that muck. That is what that thing was pulling off. Pretty gross. Um, there's a lot more on the water solution. Um, just a little bit of a hint on this. If you do see your battery charger start pulling down less amperage, you do want to add either a little bit of solution or check your anode, which is where your positive lead goes to, AKA the sacrificial plate. Um, if it gets too dirty, it's not gonna to want to pull that charge. So I would recommend maybe every 45 minutes to an hour pulling that off, cleaning it off, putting it back in with a little bit more solution and let her rip. Um, from what I've read online and from a little, some stuff I've done, six to eight hours doing this should be pretty good for most engine blocks. You can also do multiple parts with this too. You just gotta make sure that um, you do have them connected correctly to the power source. Um, I hope you learned something on this. It is kind of a hack way to do things, but you know, once again, we are two hacks garage and tell you what guys, I will see you soon. More tips to come. Hope you learned something. Have a good one.